Welcome back. And would you believe me that three weeks ago, this was an ugly Sainsbury's delivery van? Well, not anymore. We've pulled it apart and we've cut it to pieces and now she's all back together again, ready to tackle the Arctic winter. But not until we turn the inside into a cozy cabin. And that is what we're on with in this episode. But before we crack on, let's show you how we got here. At the end of last year, we were fed up with our jobs, so we quit. So we went to Australia and we built a van. Then we went to Malaysia and did a road trip. And then we went to Europe and did what we should do every day. Add a laugh. Then we got back and built this little beauty. So now you're all caught up, let's do this. Come on in out the cold. So if you're new around here, I'm Jess and the thorn in my side behind the camera is John. But before we get started, we thought we'd better give you a bit of a recap of the plan. So on the right here, we're going to have the bathroom and shower. On the left, we're gonna have a floor to ceiling wardrobe with the fridge in it. We're gonna have my kitchen here, seating here, and the beds going behind me. But before we start to fit internal fittings and wardrobes and cabinets and things, we always like to put our floor down first because it means that you're not trying to cut lino around your cabinets and get nice edging. And it means you don't have to worry about it coming up in the edges. So that's why we like to do that. But this one's a little bit different because we're gonna do lino in the living area and then a hard wearing rubber in the garage area. So we need to find where our bed's gonna go so that we can put it over the top and get a nice finish. So let's get on with figuring out our bed. So we just marked this panel up and this panel is for the side where the gas locker is. So we've got to cut a hole out the middle. So ideally you could do with a Festool track saw. You ain't be able to do anything here. What are you going to do with that? He's going to cut it. Buddy. So we got the bed in and the reason we've gone with this design is because we think it's going to be the strongest. So remember we did the strength test last week with the glue and the rivets and everything like that? Well this gives us the biggest surface area to get the glue and the rivets to fix to and also it will tie the walls in because once we screw all this wood together like I say, it'll, it'll give it some rigidity because we took that middle divider out, didn't we? So yeah, we just think it'll be a lot better. And then we've got these heavy duty draw runners and we're gonna weld a U-section frame up and put that in and that's what's then gonna slide out to make our double. And then also we were saying about the lino, so we wanted to get this in because this is only a 12 mil board. So we've only got six mil to play with either side of the lino to get it bang on in the middle. So we've marked the floor up. Now we can get our lino in. Morning everybody. The floor is in and dry and I am loving it. And I tell you what else I'm loving, these square walls. It was so much easier to fit the lino than it is in a panel van where you've got to cut round wheel arches and stuff. So loving that. Today we are on with fitting the bed back in and we're gonna make the pull out frame for the front. And the other thing that we like to do when we're building all of our cabinetry for our campers is to kind of dry fit it first because then we can get it all in, make sure it's gonna work, make any little adjustments um, that might make it easier to live in or more comfortable. Then we can get it all out and pimp it all up. So let's get going. <laughs> So I've got a bed frame back in and I've just got this front panel on here for now just to show you what I'm on about and then I can pull it off and show you the bed frame. So this will cover the mattress, so the mattress will sit in there and then I've got a lock-in latch here for the drawer runners that I'll pull out. So I'll just pull that off for a second. So I've welded up a U-frame of steel and I've screwed in half the slats to that and I'll just pull that 
and then that pulls out to make the double bed. Now these are 200 kilo draw runners, so I'm hoping there'll be enough, especially with this bar that's bolted along the front there, and when it's all screwed together, but the worst comes to the worst, I'll just drop a, a drop down legging or something like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all we're gonna do for this for now. So we're gonna get on with the shower. Just had a special delivery. Can you guess what it is? We got a Festool Traxor. Look at that little beauty. But I've got to be honest with you, I've actually been sponsored this. So let me introduce you to this week's sponsor. This is Jess, the sponsor of the, the Festool Traxor. And we have to give her a 60 seconds of promotion. So I've got to say some nice stuff about her. So I'm going to have to think here. But, uh, but she's a good You're cook. You're going to have to think. That's not a good start. Well, she reckons that if I keep going, then she's going to leave me. So I best butt my ideas up. So if she ever does leave me, you've got to know she's a good catch. And she's a good cleaner. She's a good tool passer. She's a good cook. What else? What else? She's good in the sack. Oh my God. Not that way. At school, she was good at sack race. That's what I meant. But I've got to be honest with you and I've got to tell you some bad stuff as well. No, you do not have to tell them bad stuff. You're promoting me. She's got an ass like a trumpet. Oh my good God. <laughs> We got a festival track, so we got a festival track. Right, got to be honest with you. All you Tool Talk Tuesday team can do one. But how could I say no when I got a message like this? Let's go on our tracks. <laughs> what are we on with now then? Well, we've got to do this shower. Okay. Unless you want another tea break. You have four tea breaks for getting me this little beauty. In fact, I'll tell you what. You sit down, darling. You sit there, and I'll be back. I'll be back. It's about the only time it's bloody nice to me. I got you this little cake, look, to say thank you for getting me the fa fa track saw. I was going to make you tea, but I couldn't be bothered. You couldn't be bothered? No. And you can't just buy me. You want a massage? No? What else, what else can I do for you? I've ever seen John so happy cutting a piece of wood in my whole life but to give him his dues it has done a lovely job of cutting out the door on our shower. Um, in all seriousness though that is why we wanted to buy the track saw because we've done jobs like this before where you're trying to cut a piece out of a panel and it is a bit of a pain so it has done a nice old job. So this room is a room that John is not going to use particularly much because uh, it's going to be our shower room. So we've got a stainless steel shower tray in the bottom and we love these. We know you can get plastic ones which might be a little bit lighter but there's always a worry with them cracking. So that's why we go with stainless steel. We've had three now and we love them. And then to fix this to the walls, we've come up with a little solution because obviously we've got the um, hollow GPR on the side. So we've got a bit of alley and what we're gonna do is sicker that to the walls and pop rivet it. And then we'll screw it into the sides of the wood to fix it on. Um, and then we'll sicker flex it to the top, screw it here and Craig screw it into the floor and that should keep it nice and solid. So we're just about to pop rivet this aluminium angle on the walls, but because it's only 15 mil angle, when I put a pop rivet gun in, it's not square if you see, because the, the head of it's too big. So when I try to pull that in, it'll pull it up on the on a bit of an angle and won't come in straight. So the easiest way to, to fix it is just to get a little nut, put that over the shaft of your rivet, which then spaces the rivet gun off. So then it's nice and square and it'll pull it in straight. Everyone. So we got the shower back together last night and uh, all the aluminium's dry on the side so we're just going to leave that for now and get on with building carcasses today. So we want to try and get the seat in, the wardrobe and the kitchen cabinet done just so all the base cupboards are in anyway. But uh, I let Jess have a sleep in this morning and I think I'm back in the good books. I'll show you why. Morning Jess. 
Good morning, everybody. Enjoy your breakfast. Yeah. All is forgiven. <laughs> breakfast of champions. Honestly, right, like, when I was at Catherine's and you rang me, I was like, oh, sorry, I've got to answer, like. What do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm because gone. you're a freaking nightmare. You can't wait for anyone to do anything. You just stuck your hand in front of a panel saw sliding up. Why don't you put the stopper do go in? And then you can cut them both exactly the same. Not just a pretty face. We've got the bones of this cabinet in, and what we're doing here is we've got the fridge at the bottom, and then for the first time ever, we're gonna have some hanging space in a van, mostly because we're gonna have such big buffy jackets and stuff. So this bit will be hanging space, and then on this side here, we're gonna have these baskets, which fit a treat, and down the bottom is where the electrics are gonna go, and we're putting them there because it's the closest distance to the front, uh, so it's better for running the electrical cables. You can run thinner cables and stuff like that. So that's what's going there. So now we're on with just scribing this panel for the top here. So I've scribed it, and the way we like to do it, we scribe it and cut it with a jigsaw, but even when you're good with a jigsaw, no, I'm all right, you still get a bit of a wonky line at the top there. So what we like to do is we'll scribe it, I draw the line and you can see I've cut a little bit bigger than the line and then I'll get the belt sander, sand it down and we'll get a nice smooth on point finish. It's Hoover, Festival Hoover, it's brilliant. <laughs> you plug it in. So the next job we're on with is the seating area and we've come up with a little idea, we're going to try it on this one, is to get the office chair out. So Jess used to spend hours in a day on this so we figured this is probably the comfiest position you're going to get. So we've used this chair to do a little mock-up for these frames that we've put in and then this is going to be a single here and then sort of like a double there uh, and then we're going to have a table in the middle here that will drop down between the two and then that'll make it like a big lounge area. So there'll be a little bit of a gap there between the, the double and the kitchen but still bigger than the Defender so there'll be plenty of space but we're going to keep this as a single so you then got all this big open plan space here in the middle. Welcome to the lounge room. It's proper cosy this. So we've got the cushions cut and these are actually just cut out of a piece of old secondhand single mattress that we had left over from the Defender actually. And that's a hot tip that we would give you guys. If you're not funny about mattresses, to get a secondhand one saves you a fortune and it's really good for making your cushions out of. And we actually just cut it with a carving knife, a kitchen carving knife. We find that's the best thing for cutting foam. So I wanna show you under here. This is going to hinge up, both seats are. So it's just going to hinge up like this. And under here, we've got a 105 litre water tank with space for all of the taps and things to go at the end. Under this one, we're going to put our diesel heater, which we're going to plumb straight into the bathroom to make it a bit of a drying room. And hopefully the hot water heater will fit under here as well. So when we have a shower, the water will be nice and piping hot. We did hope that we'd get the kitchen done today, but we're going to run out of daylight. So that's the job for tomorrow. You'll never guess what John just had the cheek to say to me. He said, in those dungarees, you look like a German shot putter. What's that even supposed to mean? Now, I'm no fashion queen, but have you seen the state of him? Look at him, state of him. Are you filming? I am filming because this. What? It's problematic. What? Am I not looking my best? <laughs> Crocs and socks. 10 year old work jumper covered in silicon, state of his beard, look. I am growing it, and I. And then his hair's out of control. I've been getting a bit of jip in the comments, actually. One bloke who said to me, What did he say? 
Your said, hair's not doing you any favours. Your haircut's not doing you any favours. And that was then when I had my Shelby as well. Never mind my Gar Martin. Well, look at me. Look at you, Helga. I make this look good. <laughs> Morning, everybody. John's got a few jobs that he's getting on with in the cab this morning. And my job is to start the overhead cabinets for the back. So I wanted to show you how we actually hold all of our cabinetry together. And apologies if you've watched the Defender build, because we did talk about it a little bit in that. Um, but we hold all of our cabinets together with pocket hole screws. You'll hear us refer to them as Craig screws, but that's just the brand name. And the reason these are so brilliant is that you drill a hole through the wood using a vise on an angle, and then the screw actually goes in through all the layers of the ply. So it holds it in really tight and it gets a really strong grip. Whereas if you do it with a normal screw, whichever way you go, you've got to screw up into the layers of the wood, which means that, now this is a really rubbish piece of wood, but you get separation like that. Um, and it's much less strong grip. Whereas with this, you get a really good strong joint. So that's why we do it that way. Looking a bit fresh this morning, look. Sick of getting all the grief on the comments about how bad I look. Even styled the old hair a little bit this morning. Still a bit messy, mind. And a one-year-old jumper. But jobs I've been on with this morning. So when we replace these seats, obviously I had to change the seatbelt buckle. And when you do that, when you turn your ignition on, you get an SRS airbag warning light up on your dash. So there's two ways to get around it. Obviously, you can take your old seatbelt buckle off your sprinter seat, leave it plugged in, chuck it under your seat base. But if you don't want to do that, you get some of these. Now, these are just called resistors, really cheap, only a couple of pence, but you have to get a 3.3 ohm for your passenger seat and you need a 100 ohm for your driver's seat. And then all you've got to do is you cut your yellow plug off your seatbelt buckle and then you solder one of the wires to one side of the resistor and the other wire to the other side of the resistor, chuck some heat shrink over the top and then just tuck the wire in under your seat base. So if you don't turn your ignition on for the whole thing, because obviously you're dealing with like explosives really with the airbag, but if you do happen to turn it on and it puts the light up on the dash, it's not the end of the world. All you've got to do is get a code reader and they'll just clear the codes and it'll all be good. Crikey, she's a big one this one, but we all know I've got it covered. Only joking, but just because I'm on my rest day, I've got it on these stands. These stands are plasterboard stands and we use them for all kinds. They're quite cheap as well, so we would highly recommend them. I've got my top cabinet made and I've run out of screws, so we've got to wait for the delivery man to get here before I can get any more cabinets together. But I'm actually a bit stuck with these because I don't know whether to put doors on them or whether to just put a lip on them. Obviously with doors, you've got the advantage of the fact that the baskets obviously slide in and out nice and easy and you can ram them full and hide it. But they also have the disadvantage of the extra weight and the fact that they quite often warp even with ply. And because they're at eye level, you really notice it. Whereas if we just put a little lip on, maybe a bit of alley trim or something, obviously we're saving a lot of weight and it's a lot easier and you don't have the warping issue. So I don't know what to do. We thought we might put it to a vote on Facebook and Insta. And if you don't follow us, we put what we're doing every day in real time on there so you can see what we're up to. So whilst Jess is holding that cabinet in on her own, I thought it was prime time for everybody's favorite part of the week. Tool Talk Tuesday. <laughs> Although it's not Tool Talk Tuesday, we're having a new one every week, and my favourite one in the comments this week, sat all day. So for review this week is the panel saw, and I've had a few comments saying how ridiculous it is that I've got one of these in the workshop, and you're dead right, but I love it. And the reason I wanted one of these and a track saw is the track saw is brilliant for cutting out holes in panels and things like that, and angles, which this can't do, but what this is brilliant for is speed. So if I wanted to cut some 600mm lengths of wood, you just drop it down, there's a tape measure on the end, you lock it in, and I could rip boards through all day long. Uh, same for this way here, you've got a lock stop here and a tape measure, and you just lock it up, and again, you can just cut as many as you like. And then lastly as well, they've got a bit of wood in the middle here, which slots in there. So if you're doing smaller bits, you can do it on that. I know they're a bit extravagant, but it just makes things so much quicker. The only negative is it takes up a bit of space, but, uh, but yeah. Another great one for the workshop.
the screws haven't arrived yet so we can't do any more with our cabinets so what we're going to do while we've got a bit of nice weather is get the exhaust fan in for the bathroom and it's a max fan one we've gone with this because it just pops open look so that you can have it on exhaust but then close it so you don't get cold drafts through which we thought would be pretty handy with where we're going it's also got a little light that goes on the bottom so we've never used one of these before but let's give it a go Control yourself, ladies. Afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I can't believe it. I've had to do some housework this morning, cutting the grass and paperwork and things like that. So I quite like housework, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a loser. But the results are in anyway for the no doors. And it was a close one, but you said no doors. So we're going, going to go doors. Do doors. Yeah. And we got this cabinet um, just quickly whipped up before we came in to show you as well. So what we're going to do... Right there. Right I've there. got a bone to pick with you as well. Oh, God, here we go. When we was editing the video last night, I mm. see that you was complimenting my stands. Yeah. You don't do I too... I complimented your tracks all the You other don't day. do too tall talk. Tall talk's for me. Leave no, tool talk to me. I'm not trying to steal your thunder. I, would, I thought you'd be happy that I was saying that your tool was useful. You didn't review them well enough. It's a more useful tool than you are. You didn't review them well oh, enough. Oh, right. Okay. What else do you want to tell the people about the There's stand? There's plenty of functions. I'm not going over it now. Oh, okay. Why are you not going Anyways, over it Anyways, tell them about the cards. Right. <laughs> so we're going to go with a bit of alley. And the reason we're doing alley over wood for the lip is when you take the cabinets into the baskets in and out, it's practically impossible not to kind of bang them. So if we did it with wood, it would get chipped and damaged and look a bit rubbish. And so we've gone with, we're gonna cut it in just a little bit here. We've done it on this one to show you. And then it will sit flush at the front. We'll do the same on this cabinet here. And then also the wardrobe next to the door as you come in, we're gonna do it the same there. So it's gonna match all round. I think it'll look pretty swish. Yeah, so today we're on with building a kitchen cabinet and we're probably gonna do a little little box thing over the door, right, mm. aren't we, like for spices apparently. Or hats and gloves. Or tools, we can get some tools in there. Where are, where are the tools gonna to go? Not there, they'll rip the roof off. They're not going in the you garage. Take They're going in the bloody garage, where they belong. Anyway, let's build this kitchen cabinet. You've seen we've been busy this week, so we thought we'd finish this video by taking you back to where it started. So on the right here, we're going to have the bathroom and shower. Bathroom and shower. On the left, we're gonna have a floor to ceiling wardrobe with the fridge in it. Yeah, we do. We're gonna have my kitchen here. Pancakes, anyone? Seating here. And the bed's going behind me. And according to John, my favourite place. So she's all in and I know it looks like we've got quite a lot done. We've had a few comments saying how fast we've gone with it and it's been brilliant but we've cheated a little bit really because just getting the carcasses in it's the easy bit but we've got so much more work to do now. It's all the, the finishing bits, the prepping, the painting, everything like that so half of the cupboards a sort of half screwed together as well but we just wanted to get it all in to see what space we had and we're really glad we did it that way because we were going to bring this smaller chair out a little bit and this bigger chair in a little bit so when we've got all this in we worked out that we could actually have it a bit different and it works out a lot better anyway and then the last piece of the puzzle is I've just made this little cupboard here which is going to go over the doorway here because we're just going to use it for keys or anything like that but um, but I think personally it could do just like a little bungee across there anyway. Not having a bloody bungee. She won't let me have a bungee on anything. I always say, like all these cupboards, I was like, let's have a bungee in there, but she's not having it. Right, 
The bungees are useful, but John's solution to any problem is bungee, right? What should we put here? Bungee. What should we put there? Bungee. If it was up to him, and we all know what his style is like, if it was up to him, right, this whole van would just have a mattress on the floor and some bungees on the wall with tools. But how many bungees have we got? You wouldn't yeah. let me have them on the cupboards, them cupboards? Tell you what, love, you can have as many bungees as you want in the garage. I want one bungee in the living space. Why? Because I think they look good. Alright, one bungee. One bungee. Anyway, we better leave you there for this week. So we'll see you next week. Just so you know, he's not getting a bungee in here.